In this video, we're going to be talking about Cody Frame's powerful grid system. We will be following along the documentation page on Cody House because I just want to make sure I don't forget anything. Okay, so the first point in the documentation is the container class. This class is used to center the content horizontally. Let me show you an example. So we have this uh, uh, simple uh, snippet here with a text component inside a parent with a class of container. Now we were saying before this is used to center the content and to create some space on both sides of this content. For example, as you can see right here, we have some space on the left and on the right. So if we add, for example, a background contrast lower class to this element, you can see clearly maybe let's use low you can see clearly there is some space on both sides the space the vertical space is due to this padding ylg class if we remove this class you can see the space is only on the left and right sides okay now you usually you want to use this uh, container class uh, together with uh, uh, the max width utility classes so for example, if we set max with medium on the container class, you can see that the content is in the center and the max width utility class is going to set a value for the max width property. Now for the uh, utility classes, please check the utility classes page in uh, the documentation. An alternative approach to setting a max width is setting a max width adaptive. So, for example, if we here, we use max width adaptive MD. Now, if we save, apparently nothing changes, but if we resize the window, you can see that the max width snaps. Uh, when it reaches a new breakpoint. So when it reaches a breakpoint, uh, the max width is equal to the new breakpoint, let's say. So just to show you real quick an example, uh, if we check the... Let's try the timeline component. So I have already imported the code of this component. If we paste it here, the class in this case is uh, the max with uh, adaptive LG that you can see right here. So if we uh, resize the window, the component is snapping to a specific breakpoint. So the, uh, the space on uh, the both sides is getting bigger until we reach the next breakpoint and so on. So this is how you use the container class together with the, the uh, max width and max width adaptive classes. Now the container class, one final thing is useful in particular if you want to um, align content in, uh, uh, in a grid. For example, uh, let's say that you have this uh, content right here with uh, a uh, maybe a padding on this element. Then you have another section right below with inside uh, another text component with uh, an h1 of something and then uh, some other text okay so here is the component now um, in some cases you're gonna have like a background applied to the whole component Let's set the background contrast higher with color BG. Okay. Uh, and uh, say you want to align these tags right here. Okay. So you can, uh, in this case, decide where, where, where to correctly place the container class. So you will go for something like uh, container in here, in this case. So the direct parent of the text component. And now if you save, obviously you need to set the same um, max width. 
Then maybe we can add some uh, padding. So as you can see, I'm using the container class to make sure that my content is uh, uh, perfectly aligned. Okay, you will find more examples uh, in the documentation page where we have um, where we have this example right here, where as you can see, we are aligning different sections uh, uh, using the container class. Okay, so let's move forward. So the grid system. Uh, the grid system uses uh, the uh, grid class, uh, the column classes uh, to create a grid. Okay, so let me show you an example. So back to our example, we can uh, remove all uh, this stuff and we can just let me actually move everything. We can start with a grid element. Now I'm going to create a child that has a background contrast medium, a height of uh, Excel maybe. And then we're going to duplicate this element a few times. Now, if we save, well, you can see there is this big rectangle uh, in here. And the, well, that's because we haven't set any gap. So if we set a medium gap, then you have some gap in between the element. If we apply a padding utility class to the body, we can just have some padding for our grid, okay. So as you can see, by default, each grid item takes the full width uh, of, of the grid. And uh, that's something we set in CodeFrame because uh, our framework is a mobile first framework. So uh, general, generally, when you're working with smaller sizes, uh, the elements uh, take uh, the full width, the full available width. And then you change uh, this behavior when the, the size of the viewport becomes uh, bigger. So normally we start with a predefined width of each grid item equal to 100%. Now to set a, a different value, let me change this to small. You can actually use, for example, call six. And uh, as you can see, now the width of this element is equal to six columns. The default number of columns in Kodi frame is uh, 12. And you can, uh, you can change it. And in the documentation, we explain how you, uh, you can actually change this value, which is a SAS uh, variable. And then you can use the call hyphen number of columns classes to define the number of columns occupied by a grid item. If we set, for example, in here, column six on the second element, well, it's going to snap right on the side of the first element. Now, we, we also have responsive modifiers for the column classes. So, for example, let's say that you have a column six and column six on the first two elements. And then you want to change this value to column, for, for example, four at the small break point. We're going to do the same for the second element and also for the third one. So when we uh, resize the window, you're going to have now three elements on the same row. So the way you use it is you set the number of columns and then at uh, and then you target a specific breakpoint. So it could be small, medium, large, uh, x large. So as you can see, it's really uh, simple to set uh, columns using uh, the grid and the columns utility classes. And then we have some other uh, smart column classes. For example, for the expandable items, we have just the call. Uh, class. So how does um, this class work? Now let's suppose that we have only four elements. Now we don't want to we don't want to set a specific number of columns uh, using the call hyphen uh, number of columns uh, classes, but we just want all of these items to be on uh, the same row. So in this case, we can use the call class. So we can set call call and all the items will be uh, will occupy the same space and they will be on the same row you can do so also at a specific breakpoint also in this case we support 
the responsive modifiers. So by default, you want all the items taking full width. And with CodeFrame, you don't really have to specify uh, a call 12. And then you can just resize the window and uh, there you have all your elements on uh, the same row. So this is the expandable items. And then we have the call content. So this is another uh, interesting uh, class. Now let me show you a proper example here. So what kind of uh, cases we were trying to target uh, here. So we have, for example, an input element with the class of form control. And then we have a button with the class of btn and then btm primary. Okay. Now let's make uh, using the container class max uh, with, uh, let's try excess. Now let's make this way smaller. And then we can uh, just uh, reduce the gap. Okay, now, uh, as, as usual, by default, both the elements, both the grid items take the full width. Now, say you want to change this behavior at a specific breakpoint. What are you going to do? So, you can, for example, uh, um, set a call 6 or something at the medium breakpoint and then you can do the same for the button and you're gonna have something like that but in most cases this is not gonna work because you don't really know the content of the button uh, it's gonna be difficult to figure out which breakpoint to target to make this change so um, we introduced this uh, call content class uh, which means for this column, I want the width of the column to be determined by to be determined by the content of the uh, grid item. So, if we use, for example, in here, call content at md, and then we use the call class, which is going to expand the item, and then we save. Now you have that uh, both the grid items take the full width until the medium breakpoint when the width of the button is uh, determined by the content of the button while the other item is just going to expand. So the advantage of using this technique is that if the button is uh, uh, way longer than uh, you expected, well, the button is just going to take more space and uh, the input element, the element with the call class is going to shrink. So that's how it works. Moving on, we have, uh, uh, okay, responsive modifiers. We were saying before for the column classes, uh, you can uh, change their behavior using the responsive modifiers, targeting specific breakpoints. Then for the gap. So we have already been, uh, been using uh, gap utility classes, uh, these classes are just used to set uh, horizontal and vertical gaps uh, among uh, grid items. And you can obviously change the value of this uh, gap at a specific breakpoint. We just want to, just for the sake of this um, example, we're going to use some ridiculous, ridiculous um, gap, for example, XL at MD. We're just going to have a gigantic gap, as you can see at the medium breakpoint. So before it's the X axis and then it becomes way, way bigger. Okay, moving on, we have the offset uh, classes. So let me go back to uh, the example where we have, let me remove this huge gap. Let me go back to the example where we have a an element with the background of color primary, and then we set the height equal to Excel. Let's duplicate a few times. Um, now we have this uh, we have this grid here. Let me remove the max width access. We're going to use a max width LG. Okay. Now um, let's suppose that we have an element with a call of uh, two and another one with a call of uh, 8. 
Okay, so uh, these uh, first two uh, grid items, uh, they don't occupy the whole uh, 12 columns uh, available. Um, and so we can, uh, if we want to use the offset utility classes, we can just push this element here, for example, uh, uh, by two columns. So we can just apply an offset of uh, two to the second element, and we're gonna just push it to the sides. So this space in here is gonna be two columns. So once again, for a total of 12, we could do the same to the first element. And uh, by doing so, we have uh, now that both elements have been uh, uh, moved to the side and we have two columns here. The offset classes also support responsive modifiers. So you can, for example, set offset to at the medium breakpoint and have some kind of a layout like this one. And then once you reach the medium breakpoint, you're gonna have a different layout. Okay, now let's move on. We have the auto size grid. So actually the auto size grid is a, another component. So it's not uh, by default included in the Kodi frame package, but you can download this uh, component. Let me uh, import this component real quick. So we have components folder, we add the auto size grid, copy the SCSS and paste it here. Now let's take the HTML and uh, let's take a look at this example. Okay, so the auto sides the grid is powered by um, CSS grid layout. So if we check, for example, uh, the source code, you will see that you can pick one of these five uh, utility classes. So grid auto X small, small, medium, large, and X large. Uh, each one of these classes will set a uh, mean width value, which is used by the grid to automatically calculate the number of columns. So in short, if there is enough space for another column with uh, this width, the grid is going to automatically add a new column. So that's why you don't really have to um, target any specific breakpoint. This is all done uh, automatically by uh, CSS, CSS grid layout. So if we change, for example, uh, the mean width from, uh, right now we're using uh, um, grid auto MD, let's say we use grid auto small, for example. As you can see, now we have more elements uh, on each row. And the number of columns uh, de depends on the utility class that you're using and on the available space. Okay, so this is a, an external package that you can just uh, include in your Kodi frame project if you uh, think you can make use of it. Okay, uh, moving on, we have uh, other examples. Yes, yeah, so we have the nesting example. For the nesting, let me copy uh, this real quick and let me add it here. Let me remove these classes from the body. So let's check our example. Okay, so uh, how do you nest uh, uh, grids uh, in CodeFrame? So uh, let's check the code. So this is a grid element with a grid class and a gap class. And then we have a grid child. So the first, um, the first children here are all grid items. And as you can see, they all have uh, the column classes. Now, if we open one of these grid items, we have another grid element. And inside this grid element, we have another grid item. So when I say grid element, I'm referring to an element with the grid class. A grid item is a direct child with a column class. So the way you nest grids using a Kodi frame is having a grid element and then the child is a column element and then the, the child of the column can be another grid element and so on. So what's important is that you don't apply a grid class 
to an element which that is also a grid item. So you don't want to have something like column and then uh, grid. This is not gonna work. Okay, finally, I just wanna talk uh, real quick about um, justifying the content, reversing the order, because uh, Cody Frame's grid system is based on uh, Flexbox. So we can take advantage of uh, that. And for example, if we if we create another element with the class of bg primary, a height of Excel, let me duplicate this element. So now we have another another grid. Now if we set a column of two and then column column of eight, now we have this layout. Now because uh, we were saying that the grid the grid system of Cody Frame is powered by Flexbox. Well, you can take advantage of some of the uh, Flexbox properties. And then we have in Cody Frame utility classes for most of the Flexbox properties. So for example, if we set in here on the grid element, a justify between, we are going to push both the elements uh, to the sides. So leaving the space in the middle. You could also, for example, have uh, let's suppose you have just one element that uh, takes uh, six columns out of twelve, and then you want to you want to center this element. You can yeah, you can use justify center, and by doing so you are going to center horizontally uh, this this element. And uh, the um, flexbox utility classes also support responsive variations, so you could have, for example, the justify center at uh, the medium breakpoint, and so the layout will be um, to the left until uh, the medium breakpoint, and then move to the center. One final thing is the um, possibility, the option to reverse the order of the flexbox item so let me show you uh, let's look for a another example if we check the feature component okay so we don't really have any css so just let me copy the html in here then we can just use a container max with adaptive uh, uh, LG and then a padding Y of XL. Let's save. Okay, now if we resize uh, the window, as you can see, you have uh, the text on top and then the image below. And then when uh, the, the space is larger, you can have uh, both elements on the same row. Now, let's uh, suppose that on bigger screens, you want uh, to reverse the order of the image and text. So you can do this always using some Flexbox utility classes. Uh, now, if we check the code of this feature component, it's just a simple uh, grid element with a gap of uh, uh, MD. Then we are using another uh, Flexbox utility class, which is items center. If we remove this class, for example, well, you can see that now both elements are aligned on top. Then we use, uh, so we use item center uh, so that they are aligned uh, vertically. And uh, then we have the column classes on both these elements. So these two elements here with uh, the column classes are the grid uh, children, the grid items. So what you can do here is when we change uh, the behavior of the elements and we switch from a, taking the full space to taking the six columns at the medium breakpoint, we also want to set an order of uh, two on this first element and then an order of one on the second element. So this is the image and this is the text. Now, if we check the preview, now, as you can see, we have uh, um, reversed the order of the elements, but it's also reversed on the smaller screens. So we can uh, once again target a specific breakpoint by using at and then breakpoint, save. Now you have that on the smaller screens, the text is on top, and then when we resize the window, now the image is on the left and the text is on the right, which is what we were trying to achieve. 
Okay, now you have a, a good overview of uh, uh, all the things uh, possible using uh, Cody Frames uh, grid system. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.